Yo, what's going on, my transit family? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. I miss you all. How are y'all doing? Good morning, oh, people. So good to see you. Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, I miss y'all. And now, together from all, all our homes, homes across, across the city, city. Welcome, welcome to, to the transit. transit. What up, transit? Listen, listen, I'm just going to come off the top and just say, yo, I miss y'all. Like, for real, before introducing myself, saying my name, it don't even matter who I am. The thing that matters most is I miss you. And I'm for real, like, Sundays ain't the same, transit ain't the same, nothing just seems right because you ain't here. Like, I'm used to coming in and jumping around and having fun and being with y'all, so this just ain't right to me. I miss you. I don't know how these Sundays been for you, so I hope that you miss us. But I'm telling you, I, we, we miss hanging out with y'all because transit just ain't transit. It ain't fun. It ain't nothing without y'all being here. So I can't wait till we get a chance to get together and be here having fun again because I'm telling you for real, I'm not lying. There's no joke to this. I really miss y'all. But I want to say, okay, in addition to all that, okay, let me introduce myself, for real, for real. My name is Julius, I go by Jew, that's a J-U, some people think it's a J-E-W, it's not, it's like Julius Irvin, not Julius Caesar, let me go ahead and put that out there. But again, my name is Jew, I'm happy to be here, I'm excited about this Sunday because we got the one and only, I call her genius, some people call her Mean Jean, we all know the one and only Jean, and we got her coming and bringing a word, bringing the message to us today. Day, and I'm telling you, if you know Gene like I know Gene, we are in for a treat. So I hope that you're excited and I hope that you're ready because it's going to be a crazy morning. It's going to be exciting. Morning. I can't wait for Gene to get on. Matter of fact, I need to just jump off, let her get on right now. So let me get through this thing. But in addition to Gene giving us the message today and kicking off this series that we're in, we're going to do something that's a little bit different today. And I'm really excited that we get to do this today. We're going to get a chance uh, to worship together. Now, I know for some of you right there, it's like, oh, that kind of maybe threw you off. You're like uh, worshiping virtually together or worshiping over the computer screen. Like, that's a little different. And you, you're like, man, maybe you're not really feeling it. But I'm asking you, please don't tune out. Please don't check out. Like, I think it's easy or there's a tendency that uh, something like this, we can just check out. It's like, oh, this is not maybe for us. Maybe this is going to be a little weird. I'm asking you, please make sure that you stay engaged, that you stay uh, dialed in, because I believe, we truly believe that the songs that we sing, that they really affect the lives that we live. Like, I really believe that the song that we're going to sing today, the song that you're going to hear today, there's going to be a word, there's going to be a phrase, there's going to be a line, there's going to be a lyric that's really going to stand out, that's really going to stick out and really help you in this season, really help you in this moment of what you're walking through. I truly believe that there's going to be something that's going to be sung or said that's really going to remind you of the God that we serve. It's going to remind you of the love that he has for you, that he has for me. In the moment and the time that we can feel like we are forgotten, that things are too hard, that we can't handle this, we can't control it. You're right. We're not in control. We were never meant to be in control, but we serve a God who's in control. I truly believe that this song is going to be a reminder for you this morning. There's going to be something that's going to be said, again, to remind you of the love that God has for you, of the limits or the, the limitless, if you will. God is limitless, and he, there's nothing that he will not do to come after you, to come after me. He will come after and into any situation, any moment that you and I are in because he loves us that much. Even in this season, this moment that feels overwhelming, our God has not forgotten about us. Your God has not forgotten about you. So stay tuned with us. Stay engaged. I want you to sing with us if you will, but even if not, make sure that you just stay engaged and listen as we sing these worship songs, this worship song this morning. I'm going to kick it over to the one and only, the favorite, the best MD in the land, my man, your man, our man, the one and only Grant Godby, and he's going to take it from here, y'all. What's going on, guys? Grant here with GC Transit. Guys, we have been missing getting to worship with you on Sunday mornings, and so we decided to film a few videos so that wherever you guys are, whether it's at home, uh, whether you guys are out and about, you guys could worship along with us together. And so whatever you're doing, just set it down. Feel free to sing along, to pray with us in this time, and let's get into it. spoke a word you were singing over me 
took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so
up, Transit? My name is Jean. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Over the past couple of months, maybe it's been like three months now, you've been staying at home, socially distancing, not only keeping yourself safe, but also keeping the people around you safe as well, which is great. But I don't know what you've been doing with your time, but I know for me and the time that I have, I've just been eating my way through quarantine. Right, like I've been um, baking a lot more at home, like cookies and, and cupcakes and brownies and Rice Krispie treats. And I don't know if you can consider making Rice Krispie treats baking. I've also been like cooking at home a lot more, which has been fun because I'm not a cook at all. I'm a terrible cook. Um, you probably don't want me to cook, but that's been an adventure during um, this quarantine time. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I've been spending a lot of time in my pantry and in my refrigerator. And I think those are the biggest obstacles in my life right now are the doors to my pantry and my refrigerator because they're just in the way of getting to all the really delicious food that are, that are in there. Uh, but something else that I've been doing with my time and you have probably have been doing a lot of this with your time too is spending it with these guys. Now, you're probably thinking, wait, like those are not the people that I've been spending my time with. And that's right, because these are the people that I've been spending time with. You've been spending time with the people at your house. But I think you get what I'm trying to say here, is that we've been spending a lot of time together with our families. And so today, we're starting a brand new series called In This Together. And over the next couple of weeks, we are going to be navigating through the different road bumps, bumps in the road when it comes to dealing with our families, because whether you like it or not, you are in this together with your family. And we want to help you be better together as a family and get through this together with your family. And so you've probably seen picture a family picture similar to this one, you know, where people are sitting outside, they look happy, they're wearing better clothes than what they normally would wear on a regular day. Uh, you probably have a family picture hanging up in your house somewhere or in a photo book somewhere in your house. You, we see examples of families like everywhere. You see them on social media. Your friends post about their families on their Instagram. Celebrities and professional athletes, they post pictures about their families. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of families doing TikTok videos together, which seems really awesome. I wish my family could do that, but... My husband is a terrible dancer, so actually I'm doing the world a huge favor by not posting those videos on my TikTok. Uh, but we watch TV shows about families, from comedies all the way to reality TV shows, and you get glimpses of what other real families are like whenever you go over to your friend's house or out in public. And sometimes when we see families and examples of other people's families, we can't help but compare our families to their families. Right? Like you look at somebody's family and you're thinking, man, they look like they just have so much fun together. Or man, they look like they just, just get along and, and spend so much time together. Or you look at another family and think, they've got a lot more stuff, a lot more better stuff compared to my family. And so what will start to happen is we kind of pick and choose the things we like in each one of these families and we mesh them together to come up with this image of the perfect family. But then you start to wonder and you start to have questions in your mind like, well, why is their family like that and mine isn't? Why is their family so much different compared to my family? And I know for me, growing up, one thing that made my family just a little bit different from everyone else's is that me and my younger sister, we actually went by the same name growing up. I know, really strange, but let me explain. You see, I'm Korean. And in my culture, we have this traditional naming system, right? So my Korean name is Jean Sun, and my younger sister's name is Jean Young. And not all families go through this traditional naming system, but my parents decided that they did. And so my parents would call me by my Korean name and my sister by their Korean, by their Korean name. But outside of my house, our friends just called us Jean. The problem was that whenever any of our friends called our house, they'd be like, oh, can I talk to Jean? And we would always have to ask, which gene are you talking about? Which is a really strange question to ask, because anytime we would ask that question, the person on the other end would just get really confused, hang up, and then just like never call back again. And then at school, they would be like, why, why, is, your, why is your family kind of different in that way that they've named you and your sister the same 
exact thing. And I'd have to go through this big explanation as to why, you know, about my culture and all of that stuff. And it just made me feel like my family was different from everyone else's. And maybe for you, the thing that makes your family different or the things that, thing that you feel like makes your family so much different compared to everyone else's, maybe isn't a silly story like mine. Maybe for you, the thing that you feel like makes your family different is that you feel like your family is the only one that has siblings that just won't leave you alone. Or you feel like you've, you're the only one, only family that has these different traditions that nobody else does. Or maybe for you, you feel like your family is the only family that doesn't have the opportunity to spend a lot of quality time together. Or maybe for you, you feel like your family is the only family whose parents aren't together. And so compared to these images of the families that we see and, and the perfect image that we have of a, what a family should be in our minds, we always just feel like our family is just so much dif different from everyone else's and that our family isn't perfect at all. But the thing is, you're probably not the only person to ever think that, to think or feel that your family is different or that your family isn't perfect at all. In fact, there have been imperfect families since the beginning of time. There are even imperfect families recorded in our very own Bibles, right? For example, off the top of my head, I, I can think of Cain and Abel. They're brothers, but Cain kills his brother Abel, and then Cain has to run away from home. Another story that comes to mind is Jacob and his 12 sons, where Jacob is very obvious as to which one of his sons is his favorite son, which is the youngest son. And the 11 older brothers just want to get rid of the youngest son because they're jealous. And so they leave him in a ditch to die. And not only that, Jesus' family, they're not perfect either. Mary and Joseph, they go on a road trip to Jerusalem, and on their way back home, they accidentally leave Jesus behind. And it takes them almost a full day to realize that he's not with them. So they go back to Jerusalem, and it takes them three more days to actually find Jesus. Like, what? If that story were to happen today, if that, if that were to happen today, that story would be all over the news, right? And these are just some of the examples of imperfect families that we find in our Bibles. Now, I'm not sharing these examples of imperfect families from the Bible so that it now gives you permission to try and get rid of your least favorite sibling or to, you know, disobey your parents or that your actions don't have consequences. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that families aren't perfect because the people that make them up aren't perfect either. And I think Paul puts it into, into the, these right words in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. All have sinned. We have all have made mistakes. We've all messed up. We've all made unwise decisions and unwise choices. We've all have fallen short of the glory of God. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Your brother, your sister, they're definitely not perfect. And the adult that takes care of you and watches over you, guess what? They're not perfect either. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but Jean, like, I'm just in middle school. These adults that take care of me, watch over me, like, they've lived a lot longer of a life to know what's right and wrong. They should be a, a lot more wise. They should make the right decisions. They should be a lot more perfect or on the road to being perfect compared to me, right? But let me give you a little bit of perspective here. Just like you've been kind of going through this life, you, you know, you're going through this life for the very first time. The adults in your life are going through this life for the very first time too. And for them, it's their first time parenting you. It's their first time having to take care of you and watch over you. And they're figuring this out just like you're trying to figure this out. And just like you're going to be making mistakes along the way, they're going to be making mistakes along the way too. You're not perfect, and the adults that watch over you, take care of you, they're not perfect either. And you know what, and I think it's totally okay to, to hope and dream and wish for and pray for what you want in your family. I think that's totally fine. But if your whole goal is to try and have this absolutely picture-perfect family, 
you're going to be disappointed every time because the perfect family just doesn't exist. Because the people that make it up aren't perfect either. Because just like Paul says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But there's still some really good news. Yeah, families can be messy and we make mistakes and there's lots of drama that can happen within our families. But in the middle of our imperfections, God's perfection is still at work in each and every single one of us. God is still at work at, in each and every single one of us. And it wasn't just this computer system that came up with your family. It wasn't a random scientist who put your family together. It was God that created your family. And he created it with a purpose and with a really amazing plan. He already knows that families aren't going to be perfect. He already knows that people aren't perfect. He knows the, the, the situation that your family is going through, the drama that you're facing, the good things and the bad things that are happening within your family. He already knows all about it. But God still wants to work through you and through your family. And no matter how different you feel like your family is or how imperfect you feel like your family is, that doesn't stop God's love for you and for your family. And no matter how different you feel like your family is or how imperfect your family is, it doesn't limit what God can do in you and through you. Because in the middle of our imperfection, God's perfection is still at work in each and every single one of us. I believe that's true for my family and I definitely believe that's true in yours too.